Hi, today we are going to knit the pumpkin dishcloth. This is a free download on knitpicks.com. Just search for pumpkin and you should bring it right up. For this project, you're going to need Kotlin yarn. We have Clementine and Sprout. You'll just need it in two colors. You also need a pair of size 5 knitting needles. You'll need a pair of scissors, a tape measure, and a darning needle. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to cast on five stitches. You can use pretty much any cast on you like. I'm using the long tail cast on. And you want to cast on kind of loosely because your stitches are going to get very tight on that first row. So let's cast on those five stitches. All right, and then we're going to start our first row. And we're going to increase 11 stitches over these five stitches. So we're going to be doing a stitch called a knit front, back, front, back in the middle and a knit front, back, front for the first two stitches. So what you're going to do is you're going to knit through the stitch just like normal, but you're not going to drop it off of your left, the, off your left needle. So knit and then through the back loop and then knit through the front again then drop that stitch off the left needle. We'll do it again for the second stitch. Knit, knit through the back loop, and then knit through the front again. And for the middle stitch, we're going to knit front, back, front, back. So knit through the back loop, Knit through the front again, and then knit through the back loop. And then for the last two stitches, we're going to do the same as the first two. So your t stitches are going to get tight. So knit through the back loop, and then knit again. And one more time, knit through the back loop, and then knit again. All right, now we've increased 11 stitches, and we're going to start our first row. Okay, so let's start the first row. This is a similar row you're going to be doing throughout the entire pattern. So first row, or first stitch is slip one, and then you're going to knit two, and then purl one, and you're going to repeat that uh, knit two, purl one across the row. So there's the purl one, and then knit two, and then purl one more, and then continue all across the row just like that. So for the rest of the pattern, you're going to be alternating knit rows with ribbing and increases to keep the nice lines you see on the pumpkin. Once you finish the increases, you're going to alternate a knit row with a ribbing row similar to this one until the piece is six inches long. And then you'll start decreasing. And we'll meet back here and start doing that. Okay. So once you've knit those six inches, we are going to start doing the decreases. And the decreases are set up similar to the increases, except you'll be doing knit two together and SSK, or slip slip knit, instead of doing the knit front and back. You're going to do this for a few rows, and then row nine gets a little tricky. We've got a new stitch, a couple new stitches here. So let's start with row nine. So row nine begins with, you're going to slip one, and then you're going to do an SSSK. So you're going to slip, slip, slip. Instead of just two, you're going to do a three and then knit through the back loop. 
and then you're going to knit one, and then you're just going to do a regular SSK. So slip, slip, and then knit through the back loop, and do that one more time. So slip, slip, and then knit through the back loop. And then you're just going to knit plain for eight stitches. So let's just and then once we do that, we're going to do pretty much the opposite with knit two together. So the next stitch is going to knit two together. And then we're going to knit two together again, and knit one, and then we're going to do knit three together. So instead of just knit two, we're going to knit three, and then knit one. And this will help preserve those nice lines for the pumpkin. Where you're going to, after that, you're just going to continue decreasing with SSKs and knit two together and we'll meet back here and we'll start on the stem. Okay, so once we finish those decreases, after row 12, we're going to attach the green and we're going to create the stem. So for row 13, let's get started. We're going to slip one and then knit one with the new color. In this case, we're using Sprout. We're going to pass that first stitch over you're going to want to tighten that a little bit because it's going to be a little loose there. And then we are going to purl one, knit one, and then knit two together, and then we're going to knit one purl one, and then we're going to slip the next stitch, just like at the beginning. We're going to slip, then knit, and then pass the slip stitch over, and we've decreased down to seven stitches. So for the next couple of rows, we're going to do with the same kind of ribbing, and we're going to continue that ribbing until it, your stem is an inch long. Once you do that, you're just going to bind off the next stitches, and then we're going to go ahead and do the bump vine. Okay, now we are going to create the vine. This is a really simple process. We are just going to cast on 16 stitches, and then we're going to immediately bind them off. So let's cast on those 16 stitches. And then we're just going to turn right around and bind them off. So to bind off, we're just going to knit, and then knit, and then pull that first stitch over the top. And we're going to do that for all 16 stitches. And this will create a nice little twisty vine. Once you do that, we are just going to sew it to the pumpkin, and after we sew it to the pumpkin, we are just going to weave in our ends, and then block it if you'd like.
And as you bind off, you're going to see it getting all twisty here. Once finished, we've got a nice little twisty vine that you're just going to attach to your stem. And then we're done. Okay, now we've completed the pumpkin dishcloth and you are ready to celebrate the fall season in style.